Let's talk about Montgomery Gator, one of the newest characters added to Five Nights at Freddy's steadily growing animatronic roster. The brand new bassist introduced in Security Breach and the replacement to Bonnie the Bunny. In more ways than one. Sporting a pair of cool sunglasses and advertised as a laid-back golfer, Monty shows himself in the game to be anything but chill, instead barely withholding a red-hot temper that shows itself all over the walls of his ransacked green room and leaking out into the hunt for Gregory. But what's Monty's deal? The simplest answer seems to be that he's just unchecked aggression surging out of a mindless machine, but the truth might be a little more complex than that. Which is why today we will be taking a deep dive into the pond and retrieving what golf balls of information we can off the bottom. We begin in the beginning, as we usually do, but Monty Gator's beginning is not too far from his end in this case, having no previous iterations up until his reveal. Unlike Roxanne Wolf, whose first version might have been Twisted Wolf, a wolf character with similar coloring, Monty doesn't really have any early iterations. The closest thing is a child with a green mask in FNAF 3, ages before any gator character appears. Before even Happy Frog, an Ultimate Custom Knight character who appeared alongside Pig Patch, who also seemingly has a mask in FNAF 3. Since then, it's sort of been retroactively made into a gator mask, since an important character in the Fazbear Frights books, Andrew, wears a gator mask. However, considering that Andrew was created and released around the same time that Security Breach was, it's likely a reference to that original child, but it seems to me that him and Monty might have truly been created around the same time, with the same concepts. This is my long and short way of saying that while Monty and Andrew share a temper, I don't think Andrew's story in the book correlates to the story of Monty Gator. At least there's no direct evidence that they do. In fact, a gator was so out of the cards that when the first Security Breach poster came out, people thought he was Stanley the Horse. Admittedly, Beta Monty's mohawk kind of did look remarkably like a mane and his mouth shape. Yeah, he kind of looked like Stanley. However, this was soon debunked during the merch leak when his name ended up coming out. So, if you don't count that mask from FNAF 3, you could say that Monty is the first brand new original animatronic without any previous counterparts in ages. Followed by the daycare attendant. Monty's story really does begin with Security Breach, though there was a game released beforehand, Fury's Rage, where Monty is featured as a playable character. The game was a beat-em-up, and Monty was pretty much the raw muscle of the group. Here's a couple of lines from him. I'm gonna tear this place apart! Oh, how could this happen? I'm so good looking! Now, on to Security Breach. Like I said before, Monty is a member of the main band, meaning his face is all over the marketing material. Where Monty is usually depicted with a lazy gaze and a slouched posture, giving off a relaxed vibe. A sharp contrast from his behavior we see in-game. Here's his introduction into Monty Golf. Welcome to Monty's Gator Golf, home of the Hurricane Hole-in-One. We're currently closed for the night. Come back soon. Speaking of Monty Golf, there's Monty's big attraction. A large indoor miniature golf course that's swamp-themed. The course sports a number of varying holes. A treehouse, a trailer, a basics like a concession stand, and a little shop to pick up golfing supplies. While depicted as playing golf in media, we never see Monty himself actively playing golf, or ironically, we don't even know what he thinks about golf, because he never mentions it. We do know that Monty spends most of his time on the catwalks above Monty Golf, though. But that doesn't tell us if he doesn't like golf, or doesn't like people, or just likes having the high ground. Though we do know that he has had at least one accident from falling off the catwalks and breaking both legs before the events of Security Breach. He still hangs out up there. Let's get into personality. Remember a little bit ago when I said we don't know what Monty thinks about golf, his main gimmick? Well, that goes for a lot of stuff, admittedly. Monty doesn't have as many lines as Chica and Roxanne, and of them, we have less telling lines to show off his character traits. Hey, kid, come on now. We're only trying to help. Hey, little guy, let's rock. So he's a little hard to read. We can read his aggression all right, but seeing past that requires a magnifying glass. Unlike Chica and Roxy, whose personality is sort of an inflated version of their gimmick, Chica's supposed to like to eat, so she's obsessed with eating, 
Roxanne's supposed to be beautiful and cool, so she's especially self-conscious about keeping that image. Monty's is basically the opposite of his gimmick. He's depicted as that laid-back guy, but in reality, he has some form of aggression issues. Our first introduction to Monty being him tearing apart his green room, which you're actually able to see later. And the messages seem to suggest Monty has a history of breaking fences and likely other objects as well. Again, not clear why he does this, but unrestrained anger issues seem to be the most likely candidate. One of his lines might hint at something else. I'm talking about the ever-popular You can hide, but you can't hide. This could suggest that Monty's just a little bit of a meathead. Not really much to say on that, admittedly. You know what? It kind of reminds me of 8 from 9, a fierce character of few words. Because most of his lines, too, were cut from the final product. Life just sucks when you're not one of the little and cute ones. I've heard a very good case built that all of the glam rocks are rock star stereotypes. Chica being addiction and the lack of control in an environment that always offers more, Roxy's being vanity and pride and the constant effort to keep that up while having her own self-image take a hit, and Monty's the raging, uncontrollably rebellious side of the rock star lifestyle, trashing hotel rooms and the like, and it fits. But, and I can't prove this, but I get this feeling there's something else going on. Monty's breaking his room. He hides away on walkways where nobody can reach him, unwilling to come to do shows on the main stage, and assumedly also shirking his duties at the golf course. It could be that Monty just can't be bothered wanting to lounge and do whatever because they can't tell him what to do, but it also seems like Monty's reluctance to perform, his lashing out at his enclosure, he seems unhappy. Literally like a caged animal who's so deprived of outside stimulation beyond these repetitive motions that he's lashing out. That he retreats to the walkways because he knows they're so hard to get to, allowing him to be alone. If you think about it, that is the most control Monty really has on his situation. He can go up there and nobody can reach him. Though I might be overthinking this, as a secret hidden in the minigame suggests Monty might enjoy the limelight a little more than we think. Unlike Chica and Roxy, Monty's minigame makes it into the game. Probably because it had already been posted that it would be in the game, so it was the most important thing to get implemented. The Monty A Arcade is a mini golf simulating arcade machine in the middle of Monty Golf. There's nine holes implemented, with an extra nine holes that were cut. Most of the holes are simply FNAF themed. One with the original classic band, one that's baby themed with her hiding in a closet, a cake themed one with the cupcake, BB themed, sun and moon themed, all sorts of stuff. But the most important one would be the final one, which depicts Monty rocking out on the stage in Gator Golf with Chica and Roxy, while Freddy is tucked neatly in the nearest dumpster. This could be nothing, but set up along with Vanessa's threats to have Monty replace Freddy and Monty actually replacing Freddy in one of the endings, it seems like this might not just be a reference to those, but also might be a hint towards Monty's desires as well. His desire to replace Freddy and get ahead in the band. He's already replaced someone else and got a major upgrade in status. But we'll get back to that. What's important here is this might, though it's not confirmed, depict Monty as the envious type. Literally green with envy. So if this is the case, then is Monty evil? I will get back to this at the end of the video because there's some stuff we need to cover before we're anywhere near discussing this. So let's discuss, instead, Monty's big downfall. Monty's boss battle is admittedly kind of weird. So he's in the catwalks, a place you had to crawl through a vent to get through, and there just happens to be golf ball shooters up here to fill up the hurricane bucket, a large bucket that's supposed to fill up every time someone gets a hole in one and then spill out. Though these ball shooters are made to be manually fired, all while coaster carts move around attached to some sort of ride that for all intents and purposes does not exist outside this room. Now I'm not saying this to nitpick, I'm saying this to make a suggestion. I think Monty's boss fight should have been a dark ride. Gregory climbs up to the catwalks to board the dark ride, which have the shooters mounted onto them like in the Help Wanted Foxy dark ride, and you must shoot targets, shoot Monty, and shoot switches to maneuver through the handful of paths to try to stay alive long enough to swing by the hurricane bucket and slowly fill it up. I've sung praises about the Foxy Dark Ride. Indeed, I still think it's one of the best minigames in Help Wanted. 
which means that it shouldn't be that hard for Steel Wool to replicate it. And it would be fun and memorable. Though that doesn't mean Monty's boss fight is bad. You run around the catwalks and fire into the bucket while Monty hops around and chases you. Then, once the bucket is filled, Gregory presses a button that drops it onto Monty, crushing him through the walkway and dropping him to the floor. If this also kinda doesn't make sense, why would the bucket be built to fall onto the walkway? This is because in the original unfinished cutscene, it seems that Monty hops up and holds onto the bucket and then is dropped from there. That makes a little more sense. In fact, that would play with the dark ride aspect if you actually had to shoot something and drop him from the bucket. Either way, Monty hits a few beams and crashes on the stage, his legs severed from his smashed body. Like I said earlier, this has happened before, but seemingly not to this degree. In that case, his legs were broken, but not mentioned to have been detached. Funny how the message specifically mentions his legs. Gregory comes on the stage and takes his claws. They patched it later to make it look more like he took them, and he leaps. So we've got to discuss something interesting yet again, and that's Monty's changed upgrades. Now, in the final game, Monty has special basis claws that allow him to break through stuff. A message stated that he had already gotten basis enhancements after Bonnie's decommissioning, but the upgrades are seemingly a new thing, or newer thing. But if you'll allow me to put on my tinfoil hat here, there's plenty of evidence that shows Monty's claws weren't initially what you were supposed to harvest, but Monty's legs. Number one, Monty supposedly uses his special base claws to break through the fences, but that doesn't make much sense. He doesn't even seem to use his claws, he just brute forces through them. Kicking the fences open would have made much more sense, especially since Monty's legs are powerful enough to let him pounce and jump really far, such as in the boss fight where he's handling fall damage like a pro. Well, until the end. Number two, all of the Glamrocks have a specific correlation between the upgrade they lose and their shattered forms. Chica is always hungry and eating garbage, and her upgrade is in her mouth. And once it's taken, she can no longer talk nor eat. Roxanne's deal is largely about her looks. Her upgrades are her powerful eyes, and her damage involves her face being smashed and her eyes being stolen, leaving her blind. Monty is not shown specifically using his claws unless you count that punching the fence theme has them stolen, and his most significant damage isn't in his hands or losing his arms, but in him losing his legs. In fact, Freddy pretty much gets Monty's entire hands on his model, but Monty still has his somewhat damaged hands. You have them, but you don't have them. And number three, and this is pretty much the one concrete piece of evidence. There's a file in Security Breach called Shattered Freddy Endo, left over from assumedly the unfinished Shattered Freddy segment, and yeah, Freddy has Monty's legs. While I was researching for this video, I found a guy named Maz on Twitter who found a ton of evidence that Monty's legs were initially supposed to be what Freddy took. Check out his post. I have a link in the description. But also, here's some of the pictures. Also, I might be wrong, don't quote me on this, but I think Monty's legs used to disappear when you collected his claws. Maybe I'm misremembering that. If anyone's seen that happen, drop me a line and I'll pin you real good. Either way, Monty's left shattered. Losing his sunglasses, Monty is no longer protected against the faz cam, though he does seem a little faster and can still sort of pounce. Unfortunately, this still kind of leaves Monty as the only shattered Glamrock who is technically weaker than his starting form. I know that sounds weird, but Chica becomes more observant and less distracted, and Roxanne is seemingly faster and can't be stunned. Monty can be stunned, and the only trade-off is that he's a little harder to see. He doesn't really get any changes in lines either, just grunting and yelling in animalistic wails. We can sort of hear what he's going through, but I kind of wish that they would have gotten a change in lines like Chica and Roxanne. Chica's being distorted in an unsettling way and Roxy sobbing. Though Monty is the one who ended up worse for wear than both of them combined. He appears in the upper vent in the final boss fight, but his fate after that is currently unknown. So, what happens next with Monty? Well, he either appears in Ruin, or he might appear in a future game someday. We really don't know, but I don't think a character this new wouldn't make a return when Mr. Hippo did. He doesn't have any notable mentions from the books either, just some background cameos. Since there's nowhere forward to go from here, let's take a step back to one of the major mysteries in Security Breach that involves Monty to some degree. The mystery of what happened to Glamrock Bonnie. 
So, Glamrock Bonnie was the basis before Monty Gator. One night, Bonnie's wandering into the arcade and then a couple of hours later into Monty Golf. While we don't know what happened to him, a message found in the duffel bag suggests that Bonnie was found and is in a state of severe damage. He's out of commission, and now Monty is primed to replace him, even getting the basest adjustments. Now, we know Bonnie must have been severely damaged, as with the casing and endos, it's very easy for Fazbear Entertainment to switch out animatronics. That could be why they tapped in Monty. And then, possibly, like the message suggests, Monty was so popular that they kept him on as a staple. As we know as well, Monty has a hefty temper and can totally ransack his room in a matter of minutes. He can break down fences and through doors. He has more than enough gator power to break apart another animatronic. However, as we also know, there is someone else tearing apart and viscerally attacking staff bots in the Pizzaplex. I currently think it's the daycare attendant due to the locations, including in his room. That doesn't necessarily mean Monty didn't do it, as we'll go through, but it does remind us that Monty isn't the only one who could have done it. And that doesn't take into account the possibility that Monty did it at Bonnie's request. There have been suggestions that Bonnie might have been trying to head to the fire escape, and if that's the case, perhaps Bonnie got up there, realized he couldn't leave the Pizzaplex with his programming, so he decided to get decommissioned so he could swoosh out. So he goes and he sees Monty and asks him to break him, and in return, he'll probably replace him. And Monty agrees. Unfortunately, years of untapped anger and himbo energy causes him to smash in Bonnie's face in one blow. Bonnie is knocked into a coma of which he cannot awaken, dreaming of beautiful rolling hills in his endless slumber while Monty, wrecked by guilt, is forced to perform and this leads to him lashing out. It's as likely as anything else, really. But let's get serious. So we technically have a who and a how, but we need a why. The actual possible why. And we need to look no further than that secret in the Golf A Arcade where we find the Monty replacing Freddy scene. If that's a show at Monty's ambition to rise through the ranks, then replacing Bonnie was the first step to do that. Think about it, before he was the bassist and before they replaced the merch, as mentioned in the messages, Monty was just a side attraction like Music Man or Sun and Moon Man, waiting in the wings in his little attraction to perform for the customers. Then, after Bonnie's out of the picture, Monty has suddenly moved up in the world. His face is now everywhere, he has more freedom to leave his attraction, he performs in front of everyone. He's now the rock star he desires to be. Though to play in the Devil's Advocate, it is possible that Monty's ambition to take out Freddy and replace him happened after his promotion. Like he got a taste of the limelight and liked it. Or consider this, maybe Monty doesn't like it. We see this rivalry with him and Freddy, but Monty still avoids performances and hides away. If his dislike of Freddy was personal and his desire to take his position is fueled by something else, but then maybe he doesn't really want to be the face of the Pizzaplex. Maybe he just doesn't want Freddy to be. But what else could be driving Monty? I'll get back to that in a second, but first I think we need to revisit the question from earlier in this video. Is Monty evil? So, looking at Monty himself, he is portrayed as relaxed and laid back in his marketing material, but in reality he can be aggressive, powerful, a predator who lashes out and who doesn't do well with directions. But that doesn't mean he's evil. In fact, he doesn't act evil. He acts like an actual gator. Yeah, if you look at Monty not as a character with a personality, but as an alligator, a lot of this makes sense. Alligators chill out most of the time, looking sleepy or laid back, but in reality, they can be aggressive and fierce predators. And while aggression in alligators is largely by design, by the makeup and sizing of parts of their brain, most of that aggression is triggered by how territorial they are. And then we get to the fate of Bonnie. Now, we don't know why Bonnie went into Monty Golf. We don't know what happened in there, and we don't know where he is now. But if the implication is that Bonnie trespassed and got in a fight with Monty over it, then yeah, that would fit the whole alligator thing. In fact, that might explain why Monty wants to overthrow Freddy so bad, but is fine rocking out with Chica and Roxanne. Sure, it could be that he just wants to be the leader, but he could also be taking out the only other male rival. Freddy and Monty, ignoring some additions, pretty much have identical body types. So if we were looking at gator nature, Freddy would be considered Monty's rival. But do I think Monty's evil? No, I think the truth is just that we didn't see enough of Monty to make calls on what he's really like. 
Imagine what our image of Roxanne would have been like if we didn't see the scene of her crying in her room. There were implications of her self-esteem issues in the beginning, but that was the moment that contextualized what we were seeing. And without it, we would have been missing a huge piece of the puzzle. Which is where we are with Monty. I think we're missing that one puzzle piece about his character. In fact, his whole mission with the golf course and Mazer size feels surprisingly barren and unconnected to him. I noticed there were quite a few people who mentioned their indifference to him, and honestly, I'm not shocked. He sort of got the short end of the stick compared to Roxy and even Chica. That being said, what do I think? I like him, and I think the fanbase will treat him well. Astral Spiff alone has popularized Monty's character to a degree just by irreparably breaking him. Something, ironically, that Monty might have done to Bonnie. I feel like with a little care, Monty might make a resurgence. Animatronics have become popular with less lines and screen time, so it's always a possibility. But for now, that's the end of our alligator tale. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little more about and understand better the frequently misunderstood and still not entirely figured out Montgomery Gator.